how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was supposed to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet had, did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what God had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, and, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of God had commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Well, happy Advent. More Sunday of Advent. Advent has a way of building up our hopes, doesn't it? Yes. And giving us expectations with the promise of the long-awaited Messiah. Promises of peace, promises of gentleness, promises of a ray of hope that spreads across our hearts. For me, personally, especially during this time of Advent, I, I have been seeking God's healing. I have been seeking God's wholeness. I have been seeking God's reconciliation of love as I look forward with this expectation and with purpose. Now, to say that God is doing a new thing is nothing new, right? If you've been around a while, you know that God is always doing a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> God is always about doing a new thing, and God is not complacent. Hallelujah. Sometimes we like to hear, perhaps, the story of Jesus' birth from the Gospel of Luke, because that's Mary's perspective. But the Gospel of Matthew that we read today, we can have different perspectives because this is Joseph's point of view. Joseph gets his assignment of purpose and has to face the facts of this tension between prevailing understanding of God's commandments and the new thing that God is doing in the birth of Christ. Like believers in every age who have to struggle with what to do when we've been taught with what we've been taught, has conflict with what our heart knows is the right and the good thing to do. There is a struggle many times with what we've been taught and what we know in our hearts. Joseph has to wrestle with his question, what is my purpose? What, was my, what is Joseph's purpose? He had to wrestle. Can I fulfill this calling? Can I do this thing that, I, that has been given to me to do? Of course, we know he answered the call and he did what he was called to do. He fulfilled his purpose. Can you imagine the test that he must have endured. Can you imagine? I can't. Yeah. I just I have a hard time. It's like, whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he, like 
so many of us had to rediscover his true self. He had to rediscover God and the ways of the heart instead of the ways of humanity. He had to just rediscover his heart instead of the way of tradition. God's doing a new thing. He had to rediscover the purpose of his life in ways that he probably never dreamed or never even imagined. Can you imagine being told that your wife is pregnant by the Holy <coughs> Spirit and that you're to have in this dream your child that you're going to do this. You're going to go ahead and take her on home and you're going to raise this child up and you're going to, and I'm here, I'm going to tell you the name too, by the way. Has anybody, are you parents, anybody had an experience like that? <laughs> now maybe, you know, God has come to you in a dream before and said, you, you better be careful with that child. <laughs> but you already know that. Now I've encouraged you the last few weeks with um, ways in which you can prepare your heart to the first week we talked about proclaiming God and the truth of God's love. And, I, and, and we talked about the preparation and how we are to prepare about that. And then last week we talked about the passion of God and living into that passion. And this week I hope that you will rediscover your purpose. I think sometimes we get complacent when it, when it comes to the purpose of our lives. Finding your purpose is a powerful way to live. Amen? It truly is. I suggest that when you find your purpose, you are better able to find joy and internal happiness for which most people strive to live into. If you're looking for happiness, find your purpose. If you're looking for something, look to God. Find your purpose. Finding your purpose requires you, however, to make room in the end of your heart to prepare the way as you proclaim this passion that you are called to live into. When you discover the important fact from the prophet, the prophet Jeremiah, who reminds us in Jeremiah 29, 11, listen, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the sovereign God. Plans to prosper you, woo! Plans not to harm you, woo! Plans to give you a hope, woo! Plans to give you a future. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great plan. It's not wishy-washy. It's not complacent. It's a plan. You have to find the God plan and you will seek and seek to be willing to implement in your everyday life. God's word helps us. It helps us to accomplish our purpose. We are reminded in Isaiah 55, 11, it reminds me, and this is so powerful, that God says, so my word that goes from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Woohoo! God's word is powerful. Yeah. It's powerful, and it doesn't return to God void. So when you speak God's blessing, when you speak God's word, you know that it's full of promise. It's full of purpose because it has purpose. Look to God and you will not be disappointed. As a community of faith, we too have a purpose, a reason to rediscover how we can live into the statement that you all created. Our purpose of the church of Valley Ministries is that we are an inclusive church, loving God and serving God's diverse people, encouraging everyone in their spiritual gifts or spiritual journey, excuse me, empowering all to use their spiritual <coughs> gifts and proclaiming justice and compassion. That's a powerful statement. But I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, saints, what in your life purposes encourage others? What are you doing to encourage others? What in your life purpose empowers you to use your spiritual gifts 
Or are you sitting on those gifts? I have to say, some of you are sitting on your gifts. I'm just saying, amen. Some of you are sitting on your gifts. What in your life are you doing to promote justice and compassion? There's work to do with justice and compassion. What are you doing personally to live into the purpose that God created in you? And see, only you can answer those questions. I can't answer that for you. I can encourage you, and I hope I do. I can prod you, and I hope I do. <laughs> I can give you tools, and I hope I do. But you see, when the rubber meets the road, it's your rubber meeting the road. Amen? Amen. My rubber meets my road on over here. <laughs> we might not ever get a dream like go Joseph got. <laughs> I don't know if I want a dream like that. <laughs> but each one of us is given a purpose. We're given a purpose. We just need to do something about that purpose. Being right where you're at. Starting right where you're at, putting one foot in front of the other, and do something toward living into that purpose. Nothing from nothing is what? Nothing. nothing. And so if you do nothing, guess what you're going to get? Nothing. nothing. Living into your purpose. People of faith, I, to I, I struggled with this because I didn't know if I wanted to use this illustration, but here it goes. People of faith without goals are like Alice in Wonderland. And in the conversation that she had with the cat, check this out. Alice asked, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? That depends on a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where I go, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. The thing is, having a purpose does matter, and it does care which way you go. Having a purpose gets you motivated instead of living in some fairy tale. Amen? It gets you motivated. Now, I, I know many people like living in the unreality of their own making. <laughs> but let me remind you, God has called you for a reason. God has called you for a purpose. If you don't know where you want to go, then it doesn't matter what you do. However, I believe that as people of faith, we are called to know where we're going and what we're called to do. And what we're called to do is our purpose. We are called to live in to our purpose. 